now. FBI's most wanted explained, and it's a longer video, so you already know the vibes. Finna be drawing and reacting. Haven't done that in a little minute. A gaming channel and an animation channel that I post consistently on. So if you ever run out of content and you really want to watch some more of it, go ahead and check those out. But you know the vibes. One curse, three push-ups. Let's get straight into it. For almost 75 years, the FBI's top 10 most wanted list has helped bring down some of the nation's most dangerous criminals. As for what makes the list special, it only features criminals that the FBI deems to be especially serious threats to society. And to get on it, you basically have to do something extremely messed up or have a very lengthy record of major crimes. Heinous. The story behind the list goes that back in 1949, a reporter asked the FBI to list out the 10 toughest guys that they were trying to catch so they could ask the public for help. After obtaining the list, the reporter published the criminals' pictures on the front page of the Washington Daily News, and the rest okay. is history. Since then, the FBI has been able to catch almost 500 wanted fugitives thanks to public tips. God, These man. are the current criminals on the list. Badger Diddy isn't on the list? Is the what? That would be a list that Diddy's on. Rish Kumar Shetan by Patel. On April 12th, 2015, that is a crazy A CCTV list. camera captured two Dunkin' Donuts employees, one male and one female, walking towards the shop's back room at around 9.30 p.m. before disappearing from view. A few seconds later, the man comes back into the camera's view, and it seems as if nothing out of the ordinary took place in the minute that went down between the two clips. A few minutes later, customers alerted the police when they didn't see any employees in the shop, and that's when the cops discovered something horrifying. Lying on the floor of the shop's back room was an Indian woman named Palak, lifeless, who had been pummeled to death by the man in the footage. How did he do it so quickly? As it was later revealed, the man who took Palak's life was her husband, Vadrish Kumar. As the authorities later learned, the couple had been through a series of major arguments in the months leading up to that day. According to court documents, the two of their visas were about to expire in a few weeks. Palak wanted to go back to India, but Badrish Kumar wanted to stay in the US, and it looks like he couldn't find a better way to communicate his frustration with the situation than to brutally take his wife's life. After the crime, Badrish Kumar was last seen taking a taxi from a hotel in New Jersey to a train station in Newark, but what he did after that is really anyone's guess. To bring more attention- He hasn't been found yet! He hasn't been found yet! Oh, that, that, he is in India, bro. He, he is deep in India, bro. ...into a suspect who might what? otherwise walk away scot-free, the FBI placed him on the most wanted list. As of today, there's a quarter million dollar reward to bring the suspect into custody. But almost 10 years after the crime, it looks like that won't happen anytime soon. Alejandro Rosales Castillo. The youngest suspect on the most wanted list, 26-year-old... 26. I was about to say he looked about 17. Alejandro Rosales Castillo has been on the FBI's radar for more than eight years. In 2016, he shot his female co-worker Sandy Lee in a wooded area in Cabarrus County, North Carolina. Oh my a few God. days later, the female victim's car was located at a bus station in Phoenix, Arizona. As the authorities later found out, there were multiple people involved in the case, with the main ones being the victim, a woman named Amia Feaster, and Alejandro himself, all of whom worked together at a restaurant in Oh, let me pull up the chat on my um on my phone so I can um guessing a cartel member. That's racist. I'm gonna pull up the chat on my phone so I can still read chat while I draw. I'd be forgetting to do that. I'd be forgetting to do that. Dismiss live stream manager. All right, bet. bet, 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 bet. Now I can read chat and draw at the same time. Um, I just gotta find some place to prop this. Okay, Charlotte. During the investigation, the cops learned that Sandy Lee and Alejandro had briefly dated, and after their breakup, Castillo started dating his other co-worker, Amia Feaster. According to court documents, Sandy Lee had apparently lent some money to Alejandro, and on August 9th of that year, he texted her to meet up with him at a quick trip located on Eastway Drive in Charlotte, claiming that he was going to pay her back. Disturbingly, that's when Castillo decided to rob her at gunpoint, take her oh life, God. and flee to Mexico. In an eerie clip of CCTV footage that was later released by the authorities, the suspect can be seen crossing the Mexican border through Nogales, Arizona, that. along with oh. his girlfriend, I thought it was the friend Amia. A couple of months later that same year, Amia turned herself into the authorities in Mexico and was charged with accessory after the fact of felony murder and larceny of a motor vehicle. Based on her testimony, she and Alejandro had been staying with the killer's cousin. At some point, Castillo had once again disappeared with no explanation, and that's when she decided to turn herself in. 
As of 2024, the FBI has no further clues that could lead to Castillo's arrest. Right now, all they know is that he's probably still living in Mexico. The last time he was seen, he wore his hair short and shaved on the sides, but that's pretty much all they have to go on. As of today, there's still a quarter million dollar reward out for his arrest, but there have been no further updates on his case. Before we move on, I wanted to take some time to talk about this video's sponsor, Aura, which is public data, which provides person includes instead, they include importantly release this SE. You have to worry about including your social and alert you and should the anti viable price. You can go to Ruja Ignatova. In 2016, the Bulgarian entrepreneur Ruja Ignatova stepped on stage in a beautiful red dress at the Coin Rush Global Event in Wembley, London to talk about her vision for the future of her crypto company OneCoin. During the presentation, she claimed that in two years, everyone would forget about Bitcoin and that OneCoin would dominate the crypto world as the one true crypto That's what every coin person say, though. No currency. It's hard to imagine that any of her excited, applauding investors knew that they were stepping into what was later described by the New York Times as one of the biggest scams in history. Oh, this is a scammer and not a mo Bro, you know how crazy you got a scam to get put on the FBI list for that? Like, you're on a list with mass murderers and like serial killers because you're a scammy like that is crazy. for several years ruja or the crypto queen as she's known nowadays promised her buyers a five-fold and even ten-fold return on their investment in one she coin. pulled the hell out of that road normally these kinds of claims are an immediate red flag but because the entire world was scrambling to get on the crypto action a ton of investors jumped at the opportunity with invest in 808 coin if you want to get in on this and get rich dm me for my cash app i'm telling y'all right now do not tap in. Do not tap in. He's going to scam you, and I'm going to take a cut of it. No cap. No cap. Do not tap in. Without thinking twice, resulting in a massive OneCoin buying frenzy. Between 2014 and 2016, OneCoin raked in more than $4 billion from unsuspecting Dang! investors, with more than $50 million coming from investors in the U.S. Golly! As the investors learned when they bought into OneCoin, the company was pretty much a pyramid scheme in which they were rewarded for recruiting their friends to buy it as well. And for a while, the shady multi-level marketing model seemed to be working for Ruja. However, in 2016, a lot of our investors started complaining that they were really struggling to sell their one coins and that they didn't see how they'd ever recoup their investments. Word started to spread online that one coin was a scam, which drew the attention yeah. of the media as well as federal investigators. Unfortunately, it was a little too late by then. Less than a year and a half after a presentation in Wembley, Ruja got on a plane from Bulgaria to Greece and was never seen again. That's what I've like never understood. Like the people who get like like, you know, people who do capital murder and, like, stuff like that. Why is your first thought not to immediately leave the country? Like, did he? If I was... Mm -hmm. Pause in the sentence. Pause in the sentence. Oh, shoot. Hold on. I'm rendering a video, and it's like, my computer's about to die. One second, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. If, like, y'all know how Diddy got arrested in America? Bro, why did he come back? Why did he come back? Bro, if I was Diddy, bro... You would not have seen me, bro. I would have been on various different islands, bro. I would have been on somewhere with a zip code that has a letter in it. You wouldn't even recognize the place that I was in, bro. I don't... Like, why do you come back to America? Why do you stay? I think Diddy couldn't escape because they froze, seized his arrest in the banks. I could... Wait, because they... Oh, they froze and seized his assets? Okay, he got cash. There's no way he doesn't have cash jewelry like whatever like whatever bro nah hell nah you are not catching me bro you are not catching me bro disturbingly during the investigations a bunch of really messed up emails written by ruja were leaked by federal investigators in which the crypto queen made it more than clear that she knew she was scamming people out of their hard-earned money from the very start how is it not obvious though? In some of her emails, she admitted that the company wasn't actually mining any coins, that her coin was trash, and that her investors were idiots for trusting her. In All factual statements. All factual statements. In one of her emails, she proposed an exit strategy to her partner Carl Greenwood, which consisted of taking the money, running away, and blaming somebody else for the whole thing. During the investigation, Carl ended up pleading guilty to wire fraud and conspiracy to launder money, for which he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. As it was later revealed, the FBI had been on to Ruja long before she fled from Bulgaria, even recruiting her American boyfriend to look into her company's practices for them. 
After learning about her extremely sketchy business practices and her grand scheme to steal billions of dollars from investors all around the world, she was charged with wire fraud, money laundering, and securities fraud. This promptly landed her a spot on the FBI's most wanted list, becoming only the 11th catching. woman to earn that distinction. They are not catching Looking her, into her past to find clues as to what could have influenced Ruja to do something so nefarious, federal investigators found some pretty interesting stuff. What? As it turns out, Ruja was fluent in four languages, was extremely intelligent, once had a job at a high-ranking consulting firm, and had been obsessed with fashion and maintaining her image from a very young age. It was only with the benefit of hindsight that prosecutors were able to clearly see how she used all these qualities to carry out her malicious plans. I'm gonna keep it a stack. I don't like how detailed this chicken is. I don't like how I drew that off of memory. That something, something about that is bothering me. Something about that is bothering me. I'm, I don't know how okay I am with that. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna put the chat like right here. Only you could draw chicken this detailed. Yeah, I thought about it and I was like, I even got the little, the little rustles like on the bottom. I. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the muscle memory okay. the FBI will find her anytime soon. It's been rumored that after fleeing the country, the Crypto Queen may have drastically altered her appearance with plastic Definitely. surgery and Definitely. is believed to travel with armed guards at all. I'm fleeing the country, Michael Jackson bleaching my skin and changing my name to U Eugene. They not catching me. Oh God, bro. I might even go Asian. I ain't gonna lie. I might, like, I think I, I might go Indian or something, bro. Get a silk press. Get some like different like facial features, reduce my nose. I'm gonna go by Abdul. All times. Disturbingly, there have also been several allegations that she was murdered by an accomplice, but Hell this nah. hasn't been proven. Hell nah. If she is still alive, the FBI suspects Ruja is traveling on a German passport to the United Arab Emirates. Someone said you pass well as a Rahesh. Brits, Bulgaria, <laughs> Germany, Russia, Greece, and multiple countries in Eastern Europe. Considering how elusive she's been since her disappearance almost eight years ago, it's unlikely the FBI will ever find out what became of Ruja Ignatova after pulling Absolutely off one of the not. largest financial scams in history. Four bills is crazy. Arnaldo Jimenez. Talk to me. On May 12, 2012, Arnaldo Jimenez and his wife Estrella went out to celebrate their wedding in a black 2006 four-door Maserati. Less than 24 hours after the couple had said their vows, Arnaldo knifed his wife to death in the car, dragged her into the bathroom tub of her apartment in Burbank, Illinois, and disappeared without a trace. When Estrella did- WHY?! YOU MARRIED HER! THE SAME DAY?! And come back to pick up her kids at school the next day, her family called the cops, who ended up finding Estrella's remains still in her wedding dress in her bathtub. Oh my god! Immediately, a nationwide search for Arnaldo was launched, but by that time the suspect was long gone. During the investigation, it was revealed that Jimenez had reached out to a friend before fleeing and told him, if anyone asks where I am, tell them I went to Mexico. Since then, the authorities have received multiple tips that Jimenez may have fled to Durango or Tamaulipas, Mexico, where he's believed to be hiding out with family members. Initially, a $100,000 reward was issued for anyone with information that could lead to his arrest. But four years after he was placed on the most wanted list, the FBI increased the reward to a quarter million dollars. Burbank police have stated that in the past 12 years, they've Yo-Yo trying to take a bite out of the drawing. Okay, relax. Received hundreds of tips about Arnaldo's whereabouts, but none of them had led to anything significant. After the crime, investigators traced his phone and determined that he had traveled from Chicago to Tennessee, then to Arkansas, and from there to Hidalgo, Texas, very close to the Mexican border. They were, unfortunately, unable to determine where he went after that. Police have also revealed that the car in which Arnaldo carried out his heinous crime was never found. If the suspect is ever caught, he'll be spending the rest of his life in prison for first-degree murder and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. But based on how things have played out since the last time he was seen, Hell it's no, unlikely Arnaldo will ever pay for his atrocious crime. No, he's not getting caught. Vitell Omen is in. As the leader of one of Haiti's largest and most violent criminal gangs, Craze Bari, Vitel Ohm Innocent, which do not let his name fool you, he is indeed not innocent, has terrorized the region for years, earning a spot on the FBI's most wanted list for his role in a string of brutal kidnappings and murders. In October 2021, he collaborated with the notorious 400 Mawozo gang to carry out the high-profile kidnapping of 17 Christian missionaries in Haiti. Disturbingly, oh five of the kidnapping victims were why she got cornrows? Are those are those cornrows? 
Am I tripping? Am I tweaking? Or are those like French braids or something? For children, one as young as eight months old. Oh my Held God. at gunpoint, the hostages were reportedly kept captive for two months while the gangs oh demanded a ransom of $1 million per hostage. It was only after an anonymous donor paid an undisclosed sum to Krezbari and 400 Mawozo that the missionaries were finally released. Based on court documents, Innocent and his crew ended up spending the ransom money on weapons. That same year, the Haitian president was assassinated, which caused Innocent's influence to grow exponentially in the chaos that engulfed the country. In the aftermath of the assassination, Krezbari claimed new territories and expanded their ranks quicker than the cops could even keep track of. In 2023, Crazebury boasted an estimated 600 members, many of whom were young children who were involuntarily recruited to serve Innocent's criminal organization. Terrible. Almost exactly one year after the kidnapping of the Christian missionaries, Crazebury kidnapped two U.S. citizens under Innocent's orders, Marie Odette Franklin and Jean Franklin. Unfortunately, one of the victims did not survive, while the other was held for a $300,000 ransom. Somehow, Innocent still managed to walk away scot-free. In April 2024, CNN released an interview where Innocent brazenly showed off his luxury home, which sticks out like a sore thumb in the extreme poverty surrounding him. Surrounded by gold-rimmed couches and chairs, Innocent explained to the reporter how he- So how does the stuff not get seized? Like, how does he not get cooked by this? ...came to power. In the interview, he shamelessly blamed Haiti's corruption on the country's politicians, refusing to take any responsibility for his own actions. Interestingly, he also alleged that before becoming the leader of Cranesbury, he had once owned multiple legitimate businesses, including a hotel and a rental car company, but said his companies were destroyed by the government. According to multiple crime analysts, Innocent was once a political activist before he turned to violent crime to max- <laughs> He said, bro got all that money and the L fit. No cap. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Maximize his influence. Back in the U.S., Innocent is wanted by the FBI for an insanely long list of crimes, including kidnapping for ransom, theft, murder, assault, vehicle theft, and destruction of property. There's a $2 million reward for information leading to his arrest, but with powerful connections and an armed gang, it'll be pretty tough to ever bring him to justice. Omar Alexander Cardenas in 2022, the FBI released two eerie before and after clips of a man walking into and then running away from a shopping mall area on August 15th, 2019. Okay. The man seen in the video is 29-year-old Omar Alexander Cardenas, and let's just say that he didn't exactly go shopping in the time that elapsed between those two clips. After disappearing from the camera's view, Omar walked up to a man standing outside the Hair Icon Barber Shop at an outdoor shopping center and fired several rounds from his semi-automatic handgun at his head, killing oh him god. instantly. Oh my god! Immediately after committing the crime, Omar fled the scene a little after 4 p.m., as he can be seen in the eerie FBI footage. A suspected member of the Pierce Street Gang in Los Angeles, and often going by the nickname Dollar, Omar is suspected to have fled to Mexico to seek refuge among his relatives. In September 2021, a federal arrest warrant was issued for the suspect after he was charged with murder and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution, thanks to which he was pinned on the most wanted billboard. Even though he committed a brutal crime pretty much in broad daylight and did- Yeah, how did he get put on the F- I mean, oh, I guess you get put on- I'm just not realizing you don't get put on the FBI's most wanted list for the severity of your crime. You get put there because, like, you ran- Okay, that makes sense. I was about to say, how does one murder put him there? But no, that makes sense. Slow as wobble, bro. Look like Zion. Didn't yeah, exactly I saw that shy too. away from the cameras after doing it. The cops seemed to know. It's because he knew he was going to Mexico. Surprisingly little about Omar. The only things they really know about him are that he's around 300 pounds. Bro, is 5'6, 400 pounds and ain't get caught. Wears thick prescription. <laughs> Nigga, that's Jabba the Hutt. Glasses, has at least one tattoo, and is considered armed and dangerous which alone is hardly enough to track down a criminal who's crossed international borders to flee prosecution. With time, hopefully more information will surface leading to his potential extradition and arrest. But for now, it looks like no, Omar will remain gone. a most wanted criminal. Yeah, he's long gone. Yulan Adonai Archaga Karayas. Back in the 80s, a gang known as the Mara Salvatrucha was set up to protect Salvadorian immigrants from other gangs in the Los Angeles area. Fast forward a couple of decades and the Mara, or the MS-13 for short, had become one of the most brutal and violent criminal organizations in the world. Nowadays, MS-13 has a strong presence in- I've heard of them. I've heard of them. I've heard of them. I've heard of them. 
El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, the US, Canada, and even Spain. They engage in all kinds of criminal activity, from drug trafficking, human trafficking, extortion, murder, and racketeering, often using extreme violence to maintain their influence and control. For many years, a man named Yulan Adonai they're the ones that be like cutting people's heads off and stuff, right? I Archaga Carayas operated as the head of MS-13's criminal activities in Honduras, providing support and resources to the gang in Central America and the U.S. with firearms, narcotics, and loads of cash. Often operating under his alias Porky, Yulan is wanted by the FBI for trafficking multi-ton loads of drugs through Honduras to the U.S. and for the killing of several rival gang members. Among Porky's colorful criminal charges, you'll find everything... MS-13 deep in North Carolina, too? How the fuck did they get to North Carolina? Hold up. USA map. How do they get from Mexico all the way to North Carolina? You know what? They probably be like, oh, shoot. They probably be like taking boats or something, huh? They just got some for racketeering this year? Golly. They probably be taking like boats or something, I guess, to North Carolina. I, I guess. Probably in the back of a truck. No way. Because I know they're deep in like El Paso and shit like that. Huh. They pulled the Columbus. They thought they was going somewhere. That's funny. That's fu Did you say Harriet? Okay, bro. From murder to racketeering conspiracy to drug importation to possession of machine guns. Even though he's only around 160 pounds, Yulan is considered one of the most powerful men in Yo, don't talk about him. They be waiting to murk someone. Hey, bro, Mr. MS-13 or any of y'all guys, I want no problems. I want no problems. I just want to know where you was at. But you know what? I probably shouldn't even know that. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. I, I want... I, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I, I want... Tyler... Um, Tyler Relief was the one who was conspiring on where you where you guys were, so uh, take that up with take that up with him. Blue hoodie, Afro. Um, yo, this is your guy. This this is your guy right here. This is your, you see him copping the plea deal right there. Uh, no, this is your guy right here, bro. You're gonna wanna beard in the sky. Favorite child. That this this guy this this guy right here, about like about like yay tall. Yeah, yeah, that's him right. That that's your guy right there. That's your guy right there. Stay stay away from me. No no cap. No cap. Honduras, as the MS-13 gang has had the country in a chokehold for years. The most shocking part of the story is that at one point Porky had already been apprehended by the Honduran authorities and was even taken to a courthouse for a hearing on charges of murdering two Honduran prosecutors. But during the hearing, 20 armed men dressed up in the same clothes as the anti-gang police units walked into the building escorting a veiled suspect and suddenly opened fire on the guards. Oh my God. In just a few seconds, the men subdued the guards and safely escorted Porky out of the courthouse, killing four police officers in the process. That is so For obvious crazy. reasons, Porky is considered armed and extremely dangerous. Due to the sheer nature of his crimes, the FBI is offering $5 million to anyone who can provide information leading to his arrest. Boy, you better give me 20 M's, bro. Five M's to find one. G I'm good. It's going to take five M's to find him. Are you serious? What? <laughs> no. That is, bro. Five M's is not enough, bro. Five M's is not enough, bro. No, hell no. What? Bro, no, bro. Just one of the things that makes it extremely difficult to track a suspect like Porky down is that he's taken every possible measure to fly under the radar. Although he's believed to still be in Honduras, he and his security team use untraceable numbers from Israel and Poland, and he goes to extreme lengths to keep his whereabouts a secret when he contacts his family. Although the hunt for Porky is far from over, he's likely to remain one of the most elusive and dangerous fugitives on the FBI's most wanted list for years to come. Dude, I'm good, bro. I am absolutely good. Alexis Flores. One seemingly peaceful afternoon. Oh, give me a second. I'm trying to figure out how to fit a camera lens into this. Maybe a camera lens for the, maybe a flash instead. Maybe I do like a flash. Yeah. Right. A flash like that. Uh. They gonna have a taco stand niggas out there. That's crazy. 
Flash? Okay, I'll do the flash. I'll do the flash. Noon in July 2000, five year old Ariana de Jesus was playing on the street in Philadelphia with her sister and friends when her mom went out for a quick trip to the store. When her mom came back, she started living every parent's worst nightmare. Oh, no. Ariana had been taken by a suspicious man. Immediately, her mother reported her missing, triggering a citywide. Bro, I don't. There's going to be no situation where my child is unattended, bro. I'm. That's why, like, that's why, like, I cannot have a child until, like, I'm much, much older, bro. Because if I had a child now, I'd be cooked. Because, like, that little, that little whatever is not leaving my side at all. You're going to the grocery store with me. You're going to the gym with me. You're going to the cafe with me. You're going to the bathroom with me. No, bro. You said in another stream you was going to neglect your kid. Yo, Eli, hold this band, bro. Actually, matter of fact, I'm going to just delete that chat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, get that out, get that foolishness out of here. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, cause, cause heck no, cause this, 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 I, I wouldn't be able to take. I search for the five-year-old girl. In a desperate effort to bring more attention to the disappearance, Ariana's family and friends covered every neighborhood wall, light post, and stop sign with flyers and missing posters, but nobody had any clue what had happened to the little girl. Unfortunately, after a few weeks of searching, the cops found her unresponsive in the basement of an abandoned apartment building just a few oh months after she had been taken. Disturbingly, the authorities also found a t-shirt featuring a bold political logo at the crime scene, which they deduced belonged to the suspect. During the investigation, a man came forward stating that he was pretty certain the t-shirt had belonged to a guy he only knew as Carlos, a drifter he had once employed as a handyman. Unfortunately, despite the promising lead, the case went cold for several years, leaving Ariana's family devastated and confused. Oh, it wasn't until 2007 that the authorities were able to analyze the shirt again thanks to recent advances in DNA technology, and what they found changed the course of the investigation forever. The DNA in the shirt was a perfect match with that of a man named Alexis Flores, who had been arrested in Arizona in 2002 Freaking for shoplifting and bro. in 2004 for forgery. Unfortunately, by the time his DNA was linked to the crime, he had already been deported to Honduras years earlier for other, less serious crimes. As the police would later find, finding Alexis Flores was going to be a lot more difficult than they initially thought. Throughout his colorful criminal career, Alexis had provided multiple fraudulent dates of birth and names. Despite his inclusion in the most wanted list, the only things the FBI really knows about him are that Alexis is around 5'4", 130 pounds, and has visible scars on his forehead and right cheek. Due to his crimes, he's obviously also considered armed and extremely dangerous. With a quarter million dollar reward on his head for the crimes of kidnapping and murder, you would think that someone would have come forward with information on this guy. Absolutely but 24 not. years after the crime, Alexis has remained unfound. Oh my god. Wilver Villegas Palomino. The National Liberation Army, or ELN, is a Marxist-Leninist guerrilla insurgency group in Colombia, often referred to as Colombia's last true insurgency and one of Latin America's most Someone powerful said, criminal organizations. Oh, in the Someone said he could hide anywhere. Bro is yay high. That is hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah, 5'4 is insane, bro. That nigga could hide in a pot of gold, bro. You are not finding the past few years, the ELN has expanded aggressively into Venezuela, thanks to which the National Liberation Army now has over 6,000 active members. Interestingly, for the first few decades after its foundation, the group mostly focused their efforts on kidnapping, extortion, and attacking oil infrastructure. But over time, the ELN stopped shying away from drug trafficking and became deeply involved in the international drug trade, earning them the attention of the FBI. In 2023, Wilver Villegas Palomino became the 530th addition to the FBI's most wanted list on multiple serious charges ranging from narco-terrorism to murder to drug trafficking. Often running under the alias The Hog, Palomino is a high-ranking member of the National Liberation Army who's been involved in a 20-year conspiracy to distribute drugs from Colombia to the U.S. Thanks to which a warrant for- Yo, chat, give me a random color. Random color. First color is the color I do this emote. First color. Go. Red. All right, the arrest was issued back in 2020. Wilver has also been accused of murdering multiple human rights advocates in Venezuela and the Catatumbo region in Colombia between 2017 and 2019. Due to his high rank and his responsibility in flooding the streets of Houston and other major U.S. cities with drugs, the United States Department of State's Narcotics Rewards Program is offering a reward of up to $5 million for information leading to Palomino's arrest. 
As of today, it's a complete mystery where this guy is. But considering the ELN oversees the production of over 200 tons of drugs, which are later distributed worldwide, obviously including the US, it makes sense why he was put on the list. He is not getting found, bro. Donald Eugene Fields II. Since 2022, Donald. He has to be the last one. Yeah, this Donald Eugene Fields has been wanted by the FBI for the alleged trafficking of at least one child in Missouri between 2013 and 2017. According to the authorities, Fields took a 14-year-old girl and offered her to his friend Ted Sartori Jr. in exchange for cash, cars, motorcycles, vacations, and Christmas presents. Last known to live in Franklin County, Missouri, Fields has apparently been moving around the country since 2022, working sporadic jobs as a tree trimmer and independently selling used cars in an effort to fly under the radar. Based on court documents, it's believed that Donald probably took more than one victim, and that he might be hiding out with his girlfriend Jennifer Isgriggs, who is also wanted on a felony warrant for failure to provide child support. Since 2022, the cops have received multiple tips indicating that Fields spent some time in the Tampa area. And as soon as they heard that, they started running Facebook ads with his face on a most wanted poster to ask for the public's assistance in locating him. Unfortunately, it's likely that by then, Fields had already fled to Stover, Missouri. The FBI has also placed large billboards with Fields' face in cities where he's known to travel. But so far, it seems like he's managed to stay a step ahead of the cops. Earlier in 2024, Sartori, Fields' partner in crime, pleaded guilty to his charges and will face up to 30 years in prison. He'll also likely have to pay $25,000 in restitution to his victim. Based on court documents, he'll be officially sentenced in early November 2024. As per the FBI's description of the suspect, Fields has multiple scars on his body as well as a tribal print tattoo on his right shoulder. With such a big effort being made by the FBI to make this guy's face known, hopefully someday he'll be recognized by someone and promptly turned into the authorities. But for now, the cops have urged the public to consider him armed and dangerous. Grim video. I uh, hope you guys liked it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I cursed a lot. I, so I'm now, I'm now learning. I can't draw, react, engage with chat, and count my curses at the same time. That's a little difficult. But, you know, hope you guys liked it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.